Morning everybody. Let's see if I can get past out there knocking that camera down again. Well, it's an absolutely fantastic day again. Up on the plot one there in the lower polytunnel. Um as promised in the last video, it's a <coughs> one of the jobs I must get done before the um before the Christmas break is to tend to our soft roots. Uh, now outside I'm not so bothered about um, the, the raspberries, uh, the apple trees, the pear trees, they can they quite happily um, sit there till the next day, next February when I tend to them. But the indoors, uh, the grapevine, it's a must because I've never spent any time on this year. Um, of course with my injury uh, I couldn't get there, couldn't climb and I couldn't get up to do the pruning that I needed to do. I managed to get a little bit with the long-handed secretaries, I managed to cut some of the growth back, but not all the growth. Um, which I would like to do. There was about a hundred bunches on here. I managed to cut a few of them away, and we did get a bit of a crop off them. So I was quite pleased. Um, but now's the time. Um, the sap's dropping back down into the into the into the main stem. So I think I'll spend a couple of hours today cleaning it all down. There was a lot of whips on it. I let a, I let a lot of the first year whips just grow away. The idea being, I can cut them off now and I can use them for cuttings. Uh, if you've got a grapevine, or if, um, if you know anybody that's got a grapevine and they haven't cut it back yet, well, just go and ask them. A couple of whips, or a, a couple of bits, of bits of stem that are cutting back, and you can quite easily propagate your own grapes uh, next year. And I'll, I'll show you how to do on with that damn um, soon. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to concentrate on the day, as I say, is just to clean the stem down. Get all the branches cut back, all the side shoots, right back to the first bud. Uh, cut some of them right out completely and try and space them out so I've got a nice even flow of uh, where they're going to start cropping from next year. Um, ideally you want about a foot in between each side branch and then once your side branch grows out you want to, you want your fruit and buds on and you want to cut back for a second bud or a second leaf after that and uh, that's the way to keep it pruned down but I'll take you all through that next year in the crop, in the cropping season. For the time being I want to get stuck into there but um, what we did manage to do last week, me and Roger, we've got some extra shelves built in here. And I'll move them over them. We needed some extra shelves in here because um, the big tunnel at the front there, um, I've got a little gas heater on in there, just keeping it frost free. But what's happening is that bit of extra heat that's coming out of the uh, out of the melon house into the big tunnel, that's warming it up. Now I went in there yesterday and it was, it was 55 in a cold polytunnel. That's fantastic this time of year. Just that little bit of sunshine, you can put five degrees easy on your uh, on your polytunnel temperatures. But um, so what I've done, I've moved most of the bedding down into this bottom polytunnel, which I've got um, mesh on both the doors, which is letting a good airflow right through. All there is is cover from the heavy weather, but it's plenty of airflow, nice and cold, and uh, and of course this is the result. That's one of the trays of um, wallflowers. Now we've got our pansies, we've got our polyanthus, we've got our bellis daisy, we've got our sweet williams. They're all exactly the same. Um, ideally you should have been planted in in the garden in October, November. But with me being so behind last year, I had a late sown of seed. But, you know, looking at them, I'm over the moon. They're fantastic. You can't just overwinter them in a cold polytunnel. They don't want any heat. And see, the sun's coming out there now. It's starting to come onto this polytunnel. And I bet it's 50 in here, easy. Um, so both doors are wide open, fresh air right through, and uh, keeping it as cool as possible. So that's uh, that's our spring bedding. They'll be ready for planting out in March. I'll leave them in here till the end of February, and then I'll put them outside on the staging in the garden on the new benches with a bit of cover over them, and uh, it'll sit there quite happily, just hard enough till the uh, middle of March. Plant it out, and we'll get some fantastic flowers. Um, Mid April, right through. It'll May and June. Uh, wallflowers, it's, uh, the sweet williams, the polyanthus are a fantastic spring flower and I love growing them. But uh, yeah, well pleased with them this year. Put them back over here. Right, I'll just move them over here. Uh, put them back over here. Just one thing, um, I would, uh, if, you're, if you're considering growing them the way we have this year, just be very careful with your watering. That's one thing I always say, um, less water is better. Uh, because if you've got cool temperatures, you haven't got any airflow, as I explained in the last video, you know, you're going to create more problems for yourself. So always keep a nice good airflow around your plants. And just keep them moist. If you can walk from the bottom, it's even better. 
Don't water from above because if the leaves start getting wet and it's cold, that's the first sign they're going to start getting moulds and dampening off on it. But anyway, we'll, we'll swip round and uh, I'll show you the grapevine, which I'm going to concentrate on today because uh, it really needs a, uh, a lot of work. Now this used to be two big beds. Uh, what me and Roger did last year, we, we built this big one container bed, one big raised bed. And it's, uh, it's worked well for us. Um, but uh, the grapevine was actually on the pathway in, in between the two, the two beds. But um, rather than dig it up and get rid of it, I thought, well, just leave it. And it's, uh, it's four year old now and it's starting to look at, it's starting to look at age. It's, uh, it's really getting a bit gnarled there. But it, it, if you can see, it trails all the way around here and it, it ends up in here at the top here. Um, but what I'm going to be doing today, if I can just take my time, Roger's just next door, so you'll, you'll keep an eye on us. I'm not going to do anything here, uh, anything uh, daft. But uh, as I say, there's the end of it now. Now there's a bit of blackening on there, so what I'll do with that, I'll clean that off and I'll take that back to that bud there, and I'll just nip that off there because I know that's a nice. Now it's still not dry yet because, it, as you can see, the uh, the pieces I'm cutting off are still a little bit damp. But uh, that's no problem. I'll just work my way along, take all these side shoots off. And the ones I'm not going to keep, there's a nice big bud there. So I've come from the end here to a nice big bud, which is there. Now I know that's going to break away next year. So what I'll do, I'll go about the foot from there. I'll take all the stuff off here and just work my way along. And I'll hopefully get it all cleaned off. There's some there. Uh, some really big shoots on and I will cut these back right back to, um, to the main stem cut them off all together as I say even, piece, even pieces like that you can yeah, quite easily use for um, for a cutting but what I did do yesterday off the main stem here I cut uh, some of the whips off so they're, they're just they're just first year whips I let them just let them grow on just for the idea of uh, Taking some cuttings now. Once again, I've got to get these second edge sharpened up because every time I come for them, they've been lying around and they're as blunt as anything. But um, no doubt, I'll take them down home, stick them in a bit of Coca Cola, uh, give them a clean up, and uh, get them sharpened up. Right, so there we are. I've got some, uh, got some lovely whips here. Um, pencil thick. That's all you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly as you would take your hardwood cuttings for the garden. Uh, you'd make a V in the soil, open it up, backfill it with good chop sand, put your hardwood cutting in, and then backfill it. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with these, but I'm going to, they're going to be in pots and they're going to be under cover here, just in a cold greenhouse. So what I'll do with these, I'll get a, a two litre rose pot, uh, half fill it with good chop sand, make me cutting. Now you, you want your cutting. Uh, depending on what, what pot size you're using, if I'm using a, a 2 litre rose pot, I think they're about 8 9 inches long. So, really, you want about 12 inches of good stem. So, out of them pieces here, I'll probably get two out of each one. Now, a good rose pot, I'll probably put about five cuttings um, in each one. And just remember that they're going to be sitting in there until next, next November when you start potting them up when they die back. You'll have a little bit of green growth on them this year. Yeah, one main stem coming up and at the end of the next year you can knock them out of the pots and pop them up in some nice fresh compost and you've got a, a whole new grapevine for the following day to transplant put it anywhere you want in the garden. But I'll go through all that tomorrow um, when we're starting the strawberries. What I'll do with these is I'll take them up to the, uh, the top greenhouse where it's a bit warmer, a nice bench up there and get some stuff prepared. Um, bit of root and compound, you don't need it, uh, but I like to use just a little bit of root and compound uh, just to get them set off and of course I'll spray them with chamomile tea, give them a good spray with that. Um, moist soil, they'll not get watered, but what they will do, they'll get really um, put in hard. Um, when they're in their pots, the, the compost around will be really tamped down, you don't slack, uh, you don't, um, the cutting slack in the soil, you want really nice and tight. So if you put five around, just a little bit of wool stick around the pot and really um, tamp that compost down so they're nice and firm in the pot. But I'll go through all that um, tomorrow when we'll get started on that. 
but for the time being I'm going to work on this main stem I'm going to work on this pot so I'll, uh, I'll leave it for the time being and I'll come back to the main stem there and uh, hopefully once I've got all once I get all that cleaned down there, I'll just take a wire brush to the stem and give it a good brushing down. Not too, not too um, severe, just give it a brushing down. It takes all the rubbish off it and uh, then I'll spray it with a little, maybe a little bit of GS fluid and a bit of soapy water. Um, this time of the year, as I say, the sap's just dying back on it. It's not going to do any harm. It'll clean the stem, especially any insects or uh, um, mealy bugs that's hiding away in the, um, the crevices and that. Give that a good scraping down and a good spraying and it's fine for next year. Now what I will be doing with this one, um, as I say, it is a soft fruit. I'll leave it until February and I'll put, I'll put a good handful of uh, sulfur of potash right around the root stems and that'll give it a, that'll set it up well for um, for next year. This will this will start growing away a lot easier than what I do outside because it's inside. The temperatures are a lot a lot higher and so around about the March time the sap will be rising. But if I put the um, a good manure um, and a good handful of sulfur of potash, the feeds there in the roots. Once it starts taking up all them nutrients and uh, your plants well away for next year. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to crack on this grapevine and uh, see if I can get it cleaned up. Okay. Well, what a difference. I know I can do. Good pair of seconds, as you see. I'll be right around the vine. <coughs> Right up till the end here. Cut this back, taking down most of the spider webs and whatever else has been in the way. Uh, now I will fix a, a wooden button along this top end here uh, in order for to train the vine right way along. Uh, we'll probably get about another four or five foot of growth this year, which will take us to the middle of the um, middle of the tunnel by the end of next year. But that's fine. I'm quite happy getting three or four foot in. Three or four foot will give you a good two or three bunches of grapes. Um, if you spread them out evenly, um, you should be fine. As I say, I've, uh, I've cut everything down and you know, I've got myself a nice big bunch of whips there that I've taken off. All these side shoots. Uh, you can, you know, you can vary in size. But as long as we've all got some nice buds on, that's the main thing. Uh, I'll take them up the top greenhouse and then we'll start um, we'll start potting them off. Now I feel a little bit damp on the bottom, which tells me that the the sap is just starting to go back down there now. So that's fine. That's about the right time to take your cuttings. As I say, the leaves are all down. I've stripped everything off. I've cut it right back. Um, I've left the um, some of the main branches that I want for next year. I've, I've cut them back just to one bud, so that's where you'll get your, your side branch coming off for next year with your fruit on. But uh, once you start, once it comes into, <coughs> into leaf next year, I'll go back around the stem and I'll cut away any that I don't need. And see, if I give myself about a foot between each bunch, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. But uh, yeah, well pleased with that today. It's a, it's a job well done. All I've got to do now is give it a bit of scraping down with a, with a wire brush and give it a good soaking <coughs> with a bit of soapy water and a little bit of just fluid in it. Or a bit of uh, milking disinfectant. And that'll be fine. That'll, uh, that'll overwinter just nicely there. Uh, my main job now is to get this bed ready for the potatoes. They've just arrived this morning. Uh, my first earlies. That's a red duke of York, so that's what I'll be going into here. So I think after the Christmas, the first job's going to be to get this tunnel turned over. Uh, Roger will do that, no doubt. We'll get it turned over. We'll, we'll add a couple of bags of well water manure. And then the potatoes can go in here in, um, in the end of January, which will be, which will be fine. Hopefully we should be cropping this one about the middle to the end of May, which is what we normally do. And then the bed will be ready for the sweet corn and we'll do the three sisters in here. I did mention in my last one. Um, for anybody that's just got small pots, small box gardens, small raised beds, you can grow quite a lot of veg in them in these little ones. And this will be this will show you how we can do that. Is uh, we'll have the sweet corn, we'll have beans running up the sweet corn, and we'll have squashes on the bottom, keeping it nice and moist, uh, keeping it dark, keep the Keep the weeds down and keep the moisture in, so it's, you'll get three crops out of one, hopefully. Uh, but uh, that's that's all for next year. But for the time being, yeah, I'm going to get myself up the top and uh, get these all cleaned out to what I want. Uh, two or three pots will be fine. I've got about twelve there, but you know, if I take about uh, take about six really good ones, you know, and um, 
put two potholes up. They don't take up much room, but uh, they'll be fine. I'll get them cleaned down, nice, nice straight ones, nice pencil thick ones. You get some nice ones on there, and uh, we'll get these rooted off for next year. And I'll show you how to how to go about with them. But uh, we'll finish this off here, and then we'll get started again tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to the strawberries, and we're going to. Roger's just come to give us a hand. He'd be doing all the, the lifting, no doubt. Uh, we've got our big baskets to go in the in the big greenhouse, and we've got our small baskets to go in here. There's 24 goes in here. They'll be hung in here. Um, so we'll get these hung out. Maybe just um, maybe just the next couple of days. Get these all hung out, and uh, we're all ready for next year. But uh, yeah, for the time being, we'll uh, we'll call it a day, and we'll we'll crack on this video tomorrow, and we'll get started on the strawberries. Okay, so bye for now. Afternoon everybody. Alright, well let's crack on then. We've had a busy morning again. We just caught this morning and we managed to get the uh, get the strawberries housed. The first day um the first of our cropping indoors and of course it's told us that it's a basket. Um as you can see we've been there we've been busy on with the white ones and these these are the white um, alpine strawberries. Now I persevered with these this year last year I had them in a little green bucket. So what I've done this year, I've put three plants per basket, what, what I normally do, and I'm going to try them inside on an early crop and just see how see if they do any better than what they did last year. If they don't, well, it's uh, it's bottle of number one strawberries, which is uh, the Cambridge. I've had them for about 10 to 15 years now, and uh, they've they've never let us down yet. But they occasionally like to try a new one. I have got the new strawberry down home at Toronto, uh, which I'm going to try for next year, and I'll try in a basket. But uh, for the time being, uh, I'm going to crack on with this and get stuck in there. Now I've started one basket off at the top here. If I can just show this camera the way I want it. I've managed to get one basket started. You can see how uh, how crop I was. Um, we have the bags inside. Now these have been sitting outside on the bench since these were potted up in September. These are just first year runners that were rooted off in a single pot and we'll put three in a basket. It doesn't look like three in there because what I've done with this one, um, I've completely removed the majority of the leaves. Um, there's a nice fresh leaf coming from the crown there. The crowns are well exposed, which is what I want, and they've had a good frost and I've had about three or four nights outside when the temperature has been really freezing. So I'm, uh, I'm well chuffed for that. It's giving them a good freezing, set their buds off, and of course, film cropping early in the year. Um, I'll give them a good clean down, just taking any weeds off. And what I like to do is just pull away any leaves that I think are going to be a little bit dodgy. I don't know if you'll be able to see that one if I come close enough up. Um, there's a little bit there um, mottling in the leaf, and sometimes you get bugs. You get caterpillars that's nesting in amongst the leaves, and that's the last thing you want to do when you're bringing your crops indoors. So I like to pull these away, put them in a bucket, and of course they'll, they'll burn in the fire. Now uh, I know it looks pretty sparse, like you think, oh, there's, there's, there can't be three plants in there. But believe you me, there is, and uh, they're just the crowns are just nicely exposed, just sitting on top of the compost there. And I'm uh, I'm over with that. That's the first one done. Now, as I say, the bags are in. They've been outside for the last two, three months since we potted them up. Now, what we do, we tip them on the side so they don't get flooded. Um, with the bag being inside, it's holding all the moisture. Now, they're a ton weight because they're soaked. So, what we like to do is to bring them inside, and they're going to be sitting in here for about a week to two weeks just to let them dry out a little bit before we decide to hang them. Because that's quite a weight that if you're putting your chains on and you're going to hang them straight up. So what, what we like to do is put them in the bed, let them dry out for a little bit, let some of the moisture cook, get out of the compost, and then we'll put the chains on them and we'll, we'll hang them. The only thing left to do, is what I do every year, is to, uh, is to get a little bit of um, sulfate of potash, when I can find it. It's not in there. And I'll do that later. A little bit of sulfate of potash and just a sprinkling around the roots. And of course, I'll make a uh, I'll make a spray up tomorrow or the weekend. Um, I find they're inside now. They're sitting here, so all I've got to be done is getting 
well cleaned up, we'll, we'll go around them with a little bit of sulfate of potash, and then I'll spray them. I'll make a garlic spray up, give them a good soak with that, and just to make sure there isn't any bugs on them. If it is, they're going to get a nasty surprise because uh, the garlic will not, uh, will not hurt them, but it'll, it'll certainly leave a, a foul taste in their mouth, um, and they'll not be munching on any more leaves. What I'll do, I'll make a garlic spray and I'll put a little bit of soapy water in with it, a little bit of washing up liquid, so it'll, so it'll adhere to the leaves, and uh, that sets them up fine. As I say, they'll go now, they'll sit on a border now <coughs> for a week or two weeks, just get some of the moisture out of them, and then we'll put the chains on them and hang them. Uh, the idea of the bags, what we've always done for years, is uh, we've got full control of our water, we've got full control of our feeding, and we've got no wastage whatsoever. There's no seepage out of the baskets, so you, you can actually tell when your baskets are needing a feed or when they're needing some moisture. You know, they might start and wilt a little bit, but then you just water accordingly. A pint, two pints per basket, which is fine every time. And uh, as I say, there's no wastage, no wastage whatsoever in whatever you're feeding or whatever you're watering. And, and that's the way we... It, the, the roots are always nice and moist down below in the bottom of the baskets. Um, I will cut these bags off for the face does, once they're in situ, once they're working in place, we'll go around, tidy them up, and uh, you know, so they all look um, they all look nice and tidy, and then they'll let the fruit. Um, the hands will come out, the arms over the basket, and of course, as usual, they'll be full of nice fruit for them. So that's the plan for that, anyway, that, that's the white ones in. Um, the red ones are down the bottom tunnel, we, we took 24 baskets down there this morning, so they're in there, and they'll be going through the same regime as what these are. We'll clean them out, weed them off, any dead leaves, take them off. They'll get a sulfate of potash on them, and they'll get a good spray, and we can just leave them on the bed for a week or a fortnight, let them dry out a little bit. Now what I did do yesterday, um, I was finishing off the grapevines. As I say, I've uh, brought some of the some of the cuttings up here. Um, that's a nice piece here. As I explained, I've got a rose pot here where I need to put my cuttings in. Now this is three quarter full of, of uh, a quarter full of good sharp sand, and that's all that's in there. And what I've managed to do, I've just managed to stick four canes in there. If you fill your pot right to the brim and you're trying to force your canes in, sometimes you, you end up snapping them. So I think this is a, the best idea of the lot. Um, you've got your cane, what you've cut off, um, and it's, a, it's exactly the same as what you would be doing outside. Uh, look for a good bud. Now I'll go half inch from that bud, a straight cut. Now that's the base. Stand it up against your pot, and as long as you've got a bud sticking out the top of the pot, I'll use that bud for my top flowering. There'll be one there and one in the bottom for inside, which will root away next year and give you a, give you a good root base. And when you come to take them out at the end of next year, you'll have four well-rooted canes that you can put up or transplant into your, into your flowering position or your fruiting position, wherever you want. So, as I say, put your flat, measure up, and that one I'll go about a half inch, but I'll put a slanted cut on that. So any moisture that hits that, it's going to run off. Flat on the bottom, slant on the top, and that way you can work up and down your cane, you can get two or three cuttings per cane, um, depending on the length of them. There's another nice one there. I'll just go through it once again. As I say, pick a nice, pick a nice base bud. That's one has a bit of a, been a bit of a side branch here. Nice base bud, half inch from there. Nice flat cut. Measure it up against your pot. You want a nice deep pot. You don't want to put them in shallow pots because they're going to be sitting here for a good few months. Um, I'll put a little bit of my compost here, which is a little bit of feed in it, not too much. All you have to feed these on next year is just a basic fertiliser. You can use a bit of grow more on, or you can get a, a basic a water um, a water based fertiliser. You can just pour a water can and give them a drink of that. And that's all they'll need, as I say. Once once you get a good root system on them, tip them out next year, and you can plant them. And uh, you should get fruit off them the second year. Maybe only a couple of bunches, but after the third and fourth year, they're well away. So once again, we'll put that on the desk. Move my pot there, I'll put that on the desk. They'll enter the pot, and I'm going to go to the next bud. In the top one, it's going to be a slanted half inch past the bud, and a slanted cut. There we are, and you've got a perfect cut in there. 
Now that, all you need to do is to give it a, it's optional, you can dip it in a bit of um, hormone root powder, dip it in honey, uh, there's quite a few different people have different methods of, uh, of using it, but um, yeah, whatever, you, whatever takes your fancy. So I'm just going to shift this strawberry, which is done now, uh, up on the bench, and they can sit there. I'll probably end up clearing all this bench off and put all the strawberries up on here. And it'll just sit there for about a week or two. Just for to uh, just for to dry out a little bit. So there we are, we've got a pot here, we've got our four cuttings in. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop some multi-purpose compost uh, and half of my compost mixed with a handful of sharp sand and a good handful of perlite. I'm going to bring this right to the top. There we are, and I think I've just measured out enough to fill this this one rose pot. Because what I'm going to do is to pop that in there. Use a fork. Just use a bit of stick, anything, anything you want. Uh, hold your cutting, then just tamp down, nice and hard. What you don't want is to have these canes moving around. You want them nice and firm. So I'm tamping this compost down to the base of the fork. Bit of stick, anything will do. There we have it. That compost has dropped down to about an inch below the top of the pot, which is perfect. And there we have four brand new cuttings for next year. Now these will just sit in a, a cool greenhouse. Yeah, nothing special, no heat. There's plenty of buds on there. What I will do, I'll give them a spray of chamomile tea, just to give them a good soaking. And then, as I say, that compost is nice and moist, so I won't be putting any water in there just yet. I'm going to let that dry out for a little bit. And to me, that's, uh, that's perfect. I'll carry on because I've got the, uh, I've got a few handfuls of cuttings here, which I do want to waste. As I say, you can uh, whatever you take off your vine, uh, you can cut up as long as you remember which way it come off. As I say, it's quite easy. Um, getting your buds, cutting your bottom so it's nice and nice and straight, and the bottom will sit on the bottom. The bottom will sit in your sharp sand. That's another nice one there. Uh, as I say, half inch from the bottom, nice straight cut. Measure your pot, and that root there, that bud there, as well above there. So half inch from the top there, and nip off. And it's so easy to take cuttings. Now we can do this outside. That's all you're doing is you're mimicking is what you would normally do outside with a hardwood cutting. Now we can take roses, you can take dogwoods, you can take a lot of um, shrubs now, and it's exactly the same way. You might need to take them a little bit longer, yeah, the cuttings, because what you'll do is you'll put, a, you'll put a V shape in your soil, open it up, just a V trench, and you'll backfill that trench with good sharp sand for your drainage on the bottom, which we've done here. Insert your cuttings, and then you backfill with your soil, and go along with your with your ankle or your foot and really firm them in so you've got a nice row. I'll be doing that next week or maybe it's a week after if I've got time. I know it's Christmas week next week. But um, I've got black currants, I've got red currants, I've got gooseberries, um we've got what outside raspberries, we've got apples, pears, plums, we've got so much fruit in the garden, but we'll get a really good crop and uh, all it takes is just a few minutes, half an hour here, half an hour there, to look after them well. We'll be going outside in January, the beginning of next, in the beginning of um, beginning of the new year, and we'll be starting our fruit bushes. But all that's in the next video. Only takes a little bit of time now, just to get some manure on them beds. Uh, make sure that the roots and that are nice and clean. Get some new fresh manure on them, and they say, come February, we'll put a handful of sulphur and potash round all of them. Well, what, I'll do, what I will do while I'm out there, um, I'll cut some 
some of the old um, black currant bushes away and some of the red currant and I'll make a big trench outside and I'll do exactly the same as what I'm doing here with a grapevine and we'll hopefully we'll get some we'll get some young black currants and some young red currants to transplant or to give away to family and friends as I say if you're going to cut material away and you don't want to waste it well this is ideal time this is it and it's ideal thing to do with it just a good pair of second hand some root and hormone some good compost and you're away and you'll have some some fine cuts for next year so that's our uh, that's our strawberries inside I'm well pleased with them of course it's the solstice tomorrow it's the perfect time for getting them done it's the shortest day of the year and I love it of course after tomorrow we'll start again an extra three months a day and this is this to me is a perfect time to bring your strawberries inside I do it every year at this time I wait for the solstice once that's over with start bringing them in now this is only the first crop this is only our basket, our first years. As you know, we do it in a three year rotation plan. We've got buckets. When we empty our baskets out, they go into green buckets, which is our second year. When the green buckets get emptied out, they go into big black pots, which is our third year. After the third year, they get dumped. Because we're always taking new cuttings every year. And that way, you replenish your stock and you've got nice fresh stock um, every year. So that's the way we do it. So what we'll do in January, I'll, go, I'll take you through it again with the buckets. So we'll, we'll, we'll do exactly the same with the buckets as what we're doing with the baskets. Pull all the dead rotten leaves off, give them a good clean out, expose the crowns, just pull a bit of soil away from the crown, uh, just check to make sure they're nice and healthy before they go inside, give them a good spray, and these the, the, the green pots will go up on the benches in the top tunnel here, and they'll we'll get a fantastic crop from them. Second year plants, great. Third year plants, you get a bigger bush, smaller fruit but it's worthwhile then after the third year we get rid of them because after that we think they get far too big and the fruits start diminishing and uh, they get smaller and smaller so after three years we like to call it a day and get shot of them but as I say there's always plenty of cutting material off strawberries they're so easy uh, and they're so forgiving and all you know you can just take a runner off dip it in the ground put a bit of stick over it or a brick and it'll root away they're so easy uh, but if you take a few tips from us and just treat them the way we do, you're going to have a bumper crop, uh, guaranteed. So anyway, that's, um, the next stage of this will be the feeding. I will, once they're all hung up, I will spray them, get them hung up. They'll not need any water for about a month because these baskets are well soaked, even though they've been tilted outside so they don't overflow. Um, what we'll do now, we'll give them a ch good chance to drain off, not drain off, just to evaporate a bit, so they're a little bit lighter, and then we can get them hung up. Um, and that's one of the reasons I don't use sand in this mixture. You don't want your baskets too heavy for hanging up, you know. By the time you put your three plants in and they start growing and your fruit on the top, that's quite a weight. So, uh, yeah, I'm well chuffed for that. Great beans in, and the first of our strawberries. What more can I ask for? So, I'll get a chance over the weekend for a little video online and just yeah, thanking all of you for, um, for all the support over the last year. Um, been a hard time for me trying to get back to me uh, back to me old self, but uh, Roger's been a great day. Uh, a diamond this year, he's done most of the work. Um, well, nearly all of the work in the garden this year. So we haven't we haven't done too bad. We're getting a few crops off it, and uh, I'm quite pleased. But next year it's going to be a different story. I'm nearly back on my feet, so we can get cracking this month, getting everything prepared, and then what a way. Okay, so I'll see you all again before the Christmas. I'll do a little posting online, and uh, I just hope this helps you. Get your grapevines done, and start getting your strawberries in. And I'll see you all again soon. Okay, bye for now.